Hello and welcome to a few tips and tricks for Discovery Cove. We went as a family of eight in August 2019, uh, middle of August, and there's a few things that we thought would have been really useful to know before we went. So the first one is getting there. We got there really early. We got there at seven o'clock and the doors open at 7.15 and that happened to lead to the fact that we got a dolphin swim at 8.05 and it's really important to try and get as early a dolphin swim as possible because in the middle of the summer in particular when there are thunder and lightning storms they will remove everyone from all of the water if there is lightning in the area and that did happen on the day that we went in the afternoon so we got into the water at 8.05. Um, it meant that we didn't quite get enough time for breakfast but we did our swim and went for breakfast. Breakfast is till 11 o'clock anyway. So getting there really early is definitely uh, an advantage and was a real advantage for us in terms of the timing. The second thing was getting there really early is that you can get the lounges that you want, particularly in high season uh, when it's busy. There was loads of lounges available. You won't be without a lounger, but if you want one in the shade, then it is really important that you get there early. They won't let you onto the main section of lounges until 7.30. So that's really important to know um, when you get there. And I've, I've included a little map of where we were, which was also under a tree line, which was really quite handy. And it was close to lockers and one of the snack shacks. On reflection, we did think about getting one of the cabanas that look really lovely. They're really well shaded. They're, they're quite expensive, but on the day they didn't have any, and we checked the day before as well. So if you do, if you are a family that needs that shade, a cabana is definitely worth thinking about. There are some little spots by the um, around the reef where you can tuck a few chairs directly under the trees because the the trees have got a lower leaf line. Um, but yeah, on the map you will see at seven thirty where they will let you through. I've put a little line on there. Um, so make sure if you want to get those lounges down, get your, get your towels down, because there's quite a lot of competition at that sort of time. People are kind of hovering around. So make sure that you get that done. Before you swim, you have an option uh, to go and pick up your wetsuits. You can either have a three quarter wetsuit or a, a top half vest with no sleeves. Um, some of our party found the wetsuits a little bit uncomfortable and a bit chafing around the arms and the legs. You can change that throughout the day. What I would say is, is that if you want to spend the morning in the reef, and um, then the vest is definitely a better idea because the reef is really, really warm. The, uh, sorry, the, the lagoon, scratch that, is really, really warm. Um, if you are susceptible to the cold, get a full wetsuit because they're definitely better in the in the marine reef, which is much colder. It's a similar sort of temperature to the dolphin um, to the dolphin pools. The next tip is that if you are not a particularly confident swimmer, you will be in the water quite a lot of the day. Um, a number of our party are not great swimmers. They wore the life jackets that were all free, um, and it just massively helps to um, give you a bit more confidence and not have to use the swim for, for buoyancy. The other thing is, is that lots of people use the noodles on the lazy river. They go really quickly. So literally go and get a noodle the minute that you get there and just kind of stake that out. Because by 12 o'clock we couldn't find one for when we wanted to go onto the lazy river. And you can switch between the wetsuits and the vest throughout the day. They're not, they're not bothered about that. Obviously with all the free drinks, sometimes getting in and out of a wetsuit to go to the loo is a bit of a trick. So that's something to be mindful of. Um, the next thing I would really recommend is getting a full face uh, mask. You get the snorkels and the, the masks for the day, but we went to Walmart beforehand and got a full face snorkel. And I've, I've included a picture here that you can buy them at Discovery Cove at $85. The one that I bought was $35 from Walmart. And it saves you having to have the snorkel piece in your mouth for the entire day. So for $35, I really think they're a good idea because you can breathe through your nose and mouth. Um, and, and it's just much more comfortable. They don't mist up because the masks at Discovery are quite well used, they mist up really quickly. So $35 on a full face mask, I would definitely recommend. Just make sure you get the right size. Um, and, and it does tell you on the back of a lot of them which size mask that you want. So now getting to the dolphin bit, um, it does say on the website that you can wear your wedding band, but they did make us take those off. So just to save you having to go back to your lockers, definitely take all of your jewelry off before you get in the pool. So that was a little tip 
um, that we got caught by. The other thing that it doesn't say anywhere on the website is although it says you don't have to be a, a swimmer, part of it is that you go into the middle of one of the dolphin lagoons and get towed in by the dolphin. My youngest son is not particularly confident swimmer and he really didn't want to go into the middle but what they did offer us during the day was a shallow water swim where you can literally, the dolphin will go at a different angle and I've showed a picture um, of my wife um, doing the dolphin swim who's not particularly confident and you will see that they come from a different direction so even if you, you don't like being out of your depth the, the shallow water dolphin ride is something that it doesn't really tell you about so that's really worth knowing if you're thinking mm, I don't really want to be out of my depth it, my seven-year-old could touch the bottom all of the time so I, I think that was really important to tell people the other thing that I think is really worth thinking about before you go is the picture package is amazing we got 119 pictures it's 211 dollars with tax and that's the digital only package and that's for two families essentially so we were one pod of eight so it ended up costing us kind of um 90 92 quid each but like i say the quality of the pictures is great um there's a real variety of pictures you get three or four pictures of each person doing different things um and once you get out of the water you you will buy it like it, so just go knowing that you get one picture as part of the package but I, I really, it's expensive, it really is expensive for digital pictures, but I just really think it's worth it. Um, and we collected our pictures j before the end of the day, and they do recommend that you do that, but I literally just walked in, picked them up, paid in, in left. So definitely do that before the end of the day, before everybody leaves the park, because unlike lots of parks, lots of people stay to the end of the day. It does, it does peter out around four o'clock, but they do stay longer. Um, the other thing that we weren't anticipating was is that although lunch is between 11 and 3, pretty much throughout all of that time it is really busy. Expect a queue for 30, 30, 45 minutes. So our first group went for lunch at 1 o'clock and they, they took about 30 minutes and then um, my wife and eldest son went at about 3 o'clock and again they were, they were waiting for kind of 20, 30 minutes. So do expect to wait for lunch and kind of factor that into your day. So although it's kind of it's buffet, so expect it to kind of be free and you have to pay. It is. It does take a it does take a quite a long time. The food was really good, um, and we were really impressed with the quality of the food and the snacks and the drink. But just be aware of that for lunchtime. The other thing that we are fortunate, and I feel like we want to advise people about, is that we really thought about the shark swim for my eldest son. He really likes sharks, and it's over a hundred dollars. And you do get to access a section of the Grand Reef that you wouldn't otherwise. But within the Grand Reef, there is a glass panel that you can see the sharks really, really clearly. Um, so uh, I think for a hundred and something dollars, it just wasn't worth it because the access that you get to the sharks, although yes, it's behind the glass, was really, really good. So just be mindful that you can still see the sharks with the basic um, package. And then the final thing we did find, um, I've put a little, I've put some little clips in and amongst of some of the things that I'm talking about. Um, the other thing that we found at the end of the day was a really nice. Uh, water-based seating area and that's just off of the fresh water um, kind of walking lagoon which is where the otters are and that just looked like a really nice shady place just to kind of sit and chill in the water if you just needed that heat off you and I thought that was really really lovely so again there's loads of tips and tricks videos out there but we thought from a British perspective perhaps um, and from a really up-to-date 2019 perspective these were some of the things that we found really really useful and actually some of the bits that we wish we'd known kind of going into it guys I hope that's been really useful uh, if you like the video and you certainly like cars please like and subscribe to the channel thanks very much bye bye